My name is Eduardo Morel, and I'm the founder and owner of Morel's Bread. I started Morel's Bread back in uh, 2001, along with the, with the assistance of my wife, who actually was in the bakery with me for the first few years of the business until my daughter was born. And uh, it's been 10 years now that I've been running the business. The idea of sourdough in general can be a little bit confusing to so many people because there are so many breads out there that are labeled sourdough which actually aren't sourdough at all. For a long time, the idea of San Francisco sourdough was just this really sour tasting bread. It didn't have anything to do with natural fermentation. All they were doing was um, adding some kind of acid to make it this tangy product that people associated with San Francisco sourdough. The reality of it is that sourdough can be produced anywhere in the world with the bacteria and the yeasts and stuff in the sourdough starters. And sometimes the naturally leavened bread isn't specifically all that sour. It's, you know, it's, it's a much more mild flavor depending on how much you're fermenting it. I started to develop this interest in the science of a sourdough culture. It was all trying to get back to what bread making has been for thousands of years. I think that sourdough starters was just the way to do bread up until yeast became commercialized. What starter means to me and what starter is, you just take flour and water and you're creating a medium for these uh, microorganisms that are in the air that we're breathing right now to colonize. They could take a little piece of that dough, mix that into a new dough, and that dough would start rising. The bacteria and yeast are doing their job, consuming the starch, producing gas for the bread to rise. And this is fermentation. It is a form of making food more nutritious and more digestible. My lab is interested in the beneficial bacteria you find in foods and in our gastrointestinal tracts. And in particular, we're interested in a group of organisms called lactic acid bacteria, which are essential for many fermented plants and dairy foods. Fermented food is actually the result of extensive microbial growth. When you eat yogurt, you're actually eating a product made by bacteria, and which probably still contains a high amount of living bacteria, which are perfectly harmless and sometimes even helpful. Fermented foods include sausage, salami, cheese, and fermented plant foods like olives and sourdough breads. Sourdough is really fascinating because it's a marriage between a yeast and a bacterium. There's a difference between the yeast you find in typical supermarket bread and the yeast you find in sourdough bread. And supermarket bread, just typically made using baker's yeast or Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is able to consume the sugars in the dough for growth. That's different from the yeast you find in sourdough bread, the yeast being Canada Milleri, and it's dependent on the bacteria you find in the bread, Lactobacillus San Francisensis, or San Francisco for short, to consume the sugar and spit part of it back out, and that's what allows the yeast to grow. This Lactobacillus species is really only found in sourdoughs, nowhere else. Like other lactic acid bacteria, produces organic acids as a result of its growth. This particular organism produces a lot of acetic acid, which is vinegar acid. That acid gives the bread a very sour taste. So my day varies anywhere between, you know, 15, 16 hours. I usually come in the bakery, the first thing I do I start the fire in the oven. And fortunately, with the efficiency of these ovens in terms of heat retention, um, once the fire starts, it goes. I do feel like a scientist sometimes when I bake. I think cooking is, you know, science to a certain extent. It's taking raw materials, my raw materials being wood, flour, water, and salt and you know, exerting a force on them. And I start with those things and 16 hours later, I have a complete product which I can you know, then take to the farmer's market and sell to someone. So it's a little bit of physics, it's a little bit of biology, you know, it's a little bit of chemistry. It's all rolled into one, no pun intended, with the bread. <laughs> There's a lot of dough to mix. 
The work that I used to do by hand, I was able to find the kind of this diving arm mixer that really emulates the way in which bread is hand kneaded. By the time I'm finished mixing and kneading very last dough, the first dough I mixed and kneaded is ready to be shaped. We go through this process of shaping for about three hours. All the dough is cut and shaped and then either put into the proof box if it's cold in the kitchen or that keeps it warm or not. As soon as the last doughs are cut and shaped, then the first doughs are ready to go into the oven. Then it's all baking for the next three and a half hours. I've always been fascinated by science. Both my parents are physicians, my brother's you know, is a scientist, and I, I took science, lots of science classes when I was in college. I was an English major taking all these science classes because I just was fascinated by that. And so it's really interesting that, that what I do now is both creative and scientific. And I, I don't think that the two are mutually exclusive. I don't think that creativity and science are you know, these two separate uh, disciplines. I think they're very much intertwined, and I, and I do find the, the, the beauty and the creativity in science. One more dash of steam. When you taste a bread that is truly naturally leavened bread, you're like, wow, you know, this isn't just a one dimensional thing. It's this really rounded, more kind of uh, dimensional flavor as opposed to just being sour. A lot of people who say, no, I don't like sourdough, they try my bread and they're just eating it happily and then like, this is sourdough? I'm like, absolutely, this is truly sourdough, real sourdough bread, naturally leavened bread.